Do you know what's irritating? There's not a store-bought or homemade mayo recipe that can compete with the one ingredient nearly every make-at-home mayo method leaves out. And because so many recipes overlook this powerful, cheap, if not free ingredient, too many home cooks, including me, stop making homemade mayo because it spoils too fast in the fridge and you settle for the store stuff. Well, not anymore because now this lasts as long as that without the six-syllable, 30-letter words added to increase shelf life and thickness. The longest word in this only uses seven letters, mustard which is also tied with the other seven letter word, vinegar. But finally, you can make a homemade mayo that lasts for months in your fridge. Mayo is a kitchen staple and learning how to make it is a skill you'll be rewarded with knowing how to do. I mean, how many other condiments can you say have as many uses that are made better or with a base of mayo? No sandwich has ever been made worse by adding mayo and that's a fact. There have been a lot of shambles because of a lack of it. To prove my point, let me show you several ways you can get even more uses out of your mayo and then I'll show you how to whip up this easy recipe in just two minutes. Did you know that the secret to the ultimate chocolate cake is mayo? I keep pre-measured dry ingredients for chocolate cake in a jar so that I can always whip one up in minutes. Then all I have to do is add the wet ingredients along with a scoop or two of mayo, which doesn't leave a hint of mayo taste. Chocolate cake can easily become dense, but by adding mayonnaise, the texture of the cake is transformed, becoming luscious and extra moist. Now while adding mayonnaise to a dessert may sound odd, apparently this is an old-timey baking trick that dates back to World War II or the Great Depression when food scarcity forced cooks craving sweets to get creative. But let's not stop there. While our cake is baking in the oven, let's add mayo to our chocolate icing too. And don't mind me, I'm just using the jar I had my cake mix in to stir everything up in to keep cleanup quick. If you want your homemade icing to taste like chocolate ganache, mayo is the secret to add incredible creaminess that confectioner sugar and milk alone won't give you. While it doesn't take a lot, a scoop or two is just enough to enhance the flavor of the chocolate. <music> how creamy this icing is? Homemade icing already beats store-bought, but adding mayo really makes you look like a pro. Now it's time for the final reveal, and honey, would you look at how moist this chocolate cake is? Add mayo and you'll get the same results. likely guzzle down your fair share of ranch. But once you start making this mayo recipe, you'll discover a taste that's way better than anything you can buy in a bottle. Ranch dressing is a mixture of mayonnaise, buttermilk, sour cream, garlic, herbs, and spices. And homemade ranch isn't difficult to make. Plus, the flavor payoff you get from freshly made ranch is insanely delicious. Considering that store-bought ranch is the prototypical processed food with an ingredient list that includes modified cornstarch, monosodium glutamate, uh, sodium lactate, polysorbate 60, ugh. Homemade gives you a landslide win in flavor and quality. With a bottle of homemade ranch, you're ready for a delicious salad, snack dip, or more. I pulled a salad together with some of the ingredients that I had on hand, and then I topped it with some of my moist home canned chicken breast. Drizzled with homemade ranch and packed full of hearty nutrients, this salad was a hit. Mayo is the secret ingredient to aioli sauce, which is a must if you want the best fish sandwich of your life. Start by adding a pat of butter to a cast iron skillet to butter your buns. Then make your aioli sauce. Mayo, garlic, lemon juice, and a bit of salt and pepper is all you need to make a sauce that you can dip, drizzle, smear, or spread on almost anything. 
Aioli's versatility in use and flavor makes it the perfect candidate for almost any savory dish, especially fish. After the buns have browned, assemble with lettuce, top with fish, and enjoy your aioli sauce as the finishing touch. You likely already know that mayo is the secret ingredient to making the best tasting potato salad. Now this is just a simple potato salad for a weeknight. And some folks use Miracle Whip in their salad because it's lower in fat and calories, but the trade-off is that it's also higher in sugar and is highly refined. Mayo can be a much healthier choice if you're using a homemade one made with healthy oils such as grapeseed or avocado oil instead of vegetable oils. You'll be ready for your next potluck, weekend brunch, easy dinner side, or barbecue mainstay with a from scratch recipe that everyone will love. Homemade mayo is even an important breakfast ingredient. I mean, how does one make pancakes or biscuits without it? If you're looking to make light and airy pancakes, mayo is your secret ingredient. The acidity of the mayo reacts well with baking powder. And since mayo is made with eggs and oil, the oil stops the flour from developing its gluten and becoming denser. Without this combo, gluten develops and the batter doesn't rise as much. That's why extra melted butter is often added, but by adding mayo, you can reduce the amount of fat in half when you replace the butter with mayonnaise. And if you're worried about tasting the mayonnaise in the finished pancake, you won't. The only evidence of its use will be a super fluffy, crispy outside, moist inside pancake. On weekend mornings where I'm short on time, mayo biscuits are my go-to because you just need three ingredients. Self-rising flour, several tablespoons of mayo, and a portion of milk. And no, you can't taste the mayonnaise, but it does give the biscuits a light and fluffy texture, which you'll see in a bit. These are an unfussy biscuit that still has great flavor and are the perfect texture for any type of spread or breakfast sandwich. Part of a collab brought to you by my good friend Anna over at the channel Fermented Homestead. And Anna is the fermentista friend you need to know. She has an impressive video catalog filled with hundreds of recipes that will move you from fearful to fermenting fanatic. So check out the playlist to meet more channel makers you likely already know and others you've got to meet for more fermentation inspiration. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and fermenting your own ingredients right at home and share ways to use your home camp pantry and meals your family will love. I've also put together a free recipe book linked below that shows you how to replace the eight most common store-bought condiments so that you can ditch the store stuff and start making your own. This recipe comes together in a scent, so we're gonna go ahead and get to it, but stay posted for some valuable tips and tricks that I'll also share. You'll need to start with room temperature eggs, so be sure to set out several ahead of time. Now, I like to use a tall weck canning jar because it makes working with an immersion blender super easy and serves as the container I'll store my mayo in. Start by adding two eggs, at least two teaspoons of mustard, but it can be more if that's your preference, and then one teaspoon of Redmond Real unrefined sea salt, the juice of one lemon, a tablespoon of garlic, two teaspoons of dill, Four tablespoons of brine from a ferment like plain yogurt whey, which is what I'm using here from my homemade yogurt, but you can also use kombucha or sauerkraut brine. If you use a store-bought kombucha, just make sure it's the plain flavor and says raw or indicates live probiotic cultures. Finally, add two and a half cups of avocado or grapeseed oil. 
Once everything is in your jar, wait a few seconds for the oil to separate and rise to the surface. Then place the immersion blender all the way to the bottom of the jar, keeping it perpendicular, and allow it to blend until the color turns an opaque white. But this could vary depending on how much mustard you used. I'm a little heavy handed, so my mayo is a warm off-white color. And speaking of mustard, Dijon works great too. Once the bottom is white, you can slowly lift the immersion blender up and down a few times until the rest of the oil is incorporated and emulsified. Be sure to stop and taste the mayo and adjust the seasonings to your liking. If you used whey, you'll cover the jar and leave it out on the counter at room temperature for at least five to seven hours to ferment. Transfer to the refrigerator and use as you would regular mayonnaise. It'll continue to get thicker over time and will safely store for at least three months in the fridge. See, making homemade mayo is that easy and that fast. Now let me share some recipe tips that you're likely wondering about and I'll just be looking down at my notes. First this, homemade mayo will be slightly more liquid than the store-bought versions because it doesn't have all the fillers. Even though the taste is way better from the start, if you need to slowly calibrate yourself or your family to this, you can easily make it thicker if you use two egg yolks instead of two whole eggs and then slightly reduce the oil. Your mayonnaise will be thicker if all other things are equal. And speaking of oil, not not everyone works in this recipe. The best ones are avocado or grapeseed oil. You're going to want to avoid olive oil because of the strong flavor it gives off, which will just knock off the taste of your mayo. Soybean oil is the oil most commonly used in store-bought mayos because it's cheap and it's readily used in processed foods. Even the premium brands use it. As much as we use mayo, it's just another reason to avoid the store stuff, which just has too many questionable ingredients like calcium disodium EDTA or modified food starches that add corn to your mayo to make it thick. And you don't need any of those preservatives. You need whey, which promotes lacto-fermentation and introduces all of these enzymes. And that enzymatic activity is what extends the shelf life of your mayo. And lucky enough, whey or other probiotic liquids are easy enough to get your hands on. But if you are using whey, let the mayonnaise sit at room temperature for about five to six hours before refrigerating. Another question you may have is, do I really need an immersion blender or can I use my regular blender or whisk by hand? I've done all three and here's my two cents. Choosing between a whisk and a blender is less about which one you feel is more convenient and more about the qualities or the characteristics that you want your final product to have. Mayo that's whisked by hand or a blender is saucier, glossier, um, yeah, you might want to say soupy. Well, one emulsified with an immersion blender is thicker and creamier every time. Oh, your eggs must be at room temperature before you start. But a bowl of warm water from the faucet will warm your unshelled eggs if you haven't planned ahead. And oh, if you have homemade mayo sitting in your fridge right now, it's not too late to ferment it. Just add some yogurt whey into your mayonnaise, let it sit out on the counter for about seven hours for the enzymes to activate, and bam, you've got fermented mayo. And I remember how I showed you how easy it is to make ranch dressing? Well, what I didn't tell you, but maybe you were wondering, is if that dressing became fermented too? And the answer is yes. Now you'll never have to feel guilty about indulging in a ranch dressing ever again. Now I'm backing this up by a published research study that was found in one of my favorite cookbooks, Nourishing Traditions. So basically the good bacteria inoculates everything and fermentation delays the oxidation of unsaturated oils, which form the basis of the dressing because the added bacteria consume all the oxygen. Fermentation also produces a pleasant, mildly sour taste many consumers prefer. Ooh, we've got to talk about customizing mayo. That's totally another advantage to making your own mayo. You can keep the flavor interesting. Now I will always add dill, but when the garden's going and I have an abundance of fresh herbs, I love doing combinations like lemon balm and oregano or rosemary and parsley. And I also like pairing scallions and sage. I mean, it's just a fun way to keep your sandwiches interesting. And then I often will coat my meat like my chicken and my herbed mayo, and then I'll roll it in pinko breadcrumbs. And the flavor is literally baked right in. Also, when you make your homemade fermented mayo, take care to use high enzyme ingredients, which will not only add taste to your meal, 
meals, but will also serve as a rich source of nutrients. All right, friends, those are all my recipe tips for now. For more or updated recipe information, be sure to check out the coordinating blog post at becomingafarmgirl.com. Let fermented mayo be an easy reminder that there are tons of other foods in your fridge that you can easily swap out for its fermented counterpart. And neither you nor your family will notice. You've got to check out my three top fermentation recipes and ways you'll use them by clicking on the video on your screen. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends. Thank you.